All right. So we're here on location on Front Street at the underpass, the corner of Front Street and Middletown Ave in uh, New Haven. So, hello, YouTube <laughs> and the world. Uh, my name is Demery. I go artistically as D. Douglas. You can just call me Dem for short. So this particular mural is part of the liberation project that New Spiral um, enforced in the city of New Haven. And this one in particular, I'm little, with you. yeah, okay. So this one in particular, it starts in the middle and then the story kind of branches out to the side. Okay. So, excuse the feathers from the pigeons, but <laughs> that's not a part of the original mural. But um, so, the idea behind this piece was the theme was liberation and what liberation looked like to me. Yep. So for me personally, because I'm not really, I don't consider myself a political artist, it was kind of hard for me to actually think of something um, so profound for me to express onto a large size canvas yeah. that people would be able to interpret their own way. So um, I kind of thought about what would liberation look like if I was younger, like when I was younger in the ideal world what would liberation look like for me? And I felt like the importance of affirmation of words would have been very beneficial for me okay. growing up. So I have, it's two women or two ladies, but it's the same person. Yeah. So we have the younger version and the older version of herself. Gotcha. And the older version is placing a crown on the younger version of herself, kind of instilling that worth at a younger age. Yep. And I feel like my interpretation of liberation in an ideal society would have been not having any financial burden, no finance, no um, systemic racism, nothing like that. Yep. And instilling that worth and letting me know that I'm a queen at a younger age versus me growing and learning as I go. Yeah, definitely. So I decided to go with ash her being an astronaut as her profession because I wanted to play on the idea of like the sky's the limit and there's really nothing that can hold you back cool. besides yourself. Yeah. So I wanted to have her be an astronaut she has her own crown because she's already been her queen and she's like listen you're also a queen as well and put in the place of the crown on the younger version of herself yeah i also incorporated lotus flowers because they're one of the only flowers that grow in darkness so i kind of wanted to use that symbol as symbolism as to represent no matter what your past no matter what you have gone through there's something beautiful that can come out of that moment sure and me my particular focus in painting is natural hair so I thought it was kind of important for me to incorporate that in my first outdoor mural yeah. so you see that the girl has they have twists and yeah. they have beads and it's kind of the same hairstyle with the same bead like pattern to kind of represent to show that it is exactly the same person gotcha so from there it kind of branches out okay so we have the story of listen this is your worth for you as a younger age I'm instilling it to you now words of affirmation no obstacles in your way liberation yep. and with that this is what can happen. So the world could be a beautiful place. Gotcha. So with that, I did flowers, hummingbird, butterflies, kind of playing on the idea of liberation and freedom of expression, freedom of power, freedom and empowerment of women. So that's why I wanted to do the outer pieces to be kind of like, from this moment, this is what can happen. Gotcha. And then the outer pieces are kind of more abstract pieces. And if you can see, they kind of have like, the lines are going in every which way direction to kind of show that your life could be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And it could be in because of this one moment, the world could be a better place and you can go in any direction you want to. So that's kind of where this how it's unpacked. Gotcha. A lot of people like to read it left to right or right to left, which is fine. But the original concept was go from the middle and then read it outwards that way. Cool. So these two sides, they're not mirror each other, but the story, the content is the same. Gotcha. It wasn't until 2016 when I went on my natural hair journey that I decided that I don't see a lot of paintings that look like me. Yeah. So I wanted to incorporate that natural hair, the full locks, the braids, the afro puffs, all that stuff in, onto a canvas yeah. to kind of represent like black hair is beautiful. Cause I don't know if you know the crown act that kind of prohibits people from discriminating oh. based off of the hair that they yeah. yeah. So because of the crown act that kind of like reinforced me to even do this even more. And that was kind of like my silent protest to say like, hey, Listen, it doesn't matter what the hair that's growing out of our head. It doesn't d dictate the type of person that I am. Right. Like, I am not my hair, basically. Right, for sure. Gotcha. So when I went through my own natural hair journey, I was like, 
because paintings speak a story. For sure. And my story wasn't being represented. And I thought it was important. Yeah. So I was like, listen, I'm going through this journey, the transition to going from a relaxer and chemicals to just doing natural hair. I feel like this should be, you know, showcased somewhere. Yeah. So be based off of that, just the idea, I was just like, I wonder if I can glue hair onto a canvas. And then I went to Walmart, I bought some glue. Yeah. I did, first I did Elmer's glue, that was trash. Then I bought um, Gorilla Glue. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that works. And it has a little spout so you can, you know, make the lines more intricate. And I just put braids and everything onto the canvas. Yeah. And people liked it. And once I realized that that was kind of like a thing that people enjoyed and I enjoyed it, yep. I decided to keep going with that. And that's your own lane. And that's my own lane. Uh, and that was to me. Yeah, that was going to actually be my next question. Mm -hmm. Is like where, where that came from to actually start putting physical hair yeah. on the canvas. Yeah. Like, because I saw that and I was like, oh, no. Because at first I was like, man, that looks so puffy and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I was like, oh no, that's really hair. Yeah. So, and then I saw another one where you had like some beads or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, what made you decide to incorporate like physical things onto your artwork? I don't know. I think it just brought a different element to a painting. Like it brought like that 3D, dimen that three dimensional type of aspect that some paintings, a lot of paintings don't have. Yeah. And I thought it was important to not only paint natural hair, but actually show what the texture looks like. For sure. So I did, I would glue on braids and I would add beads to it. I would glue on locks. And this is like me going to the beauty supply store, yep. buying packs of hair. Yeah. And I'm just like, and the, the lady at the checkout counter is like, you just want one pack? I'm like, yeah, just one pack. Yeah. Just going, she doesn't realize it's going on a painting <laughs> right. and not in my own head. Yep. So it's just like, I don't know. I just, when I did that first painting and I realized how much that really actually spoke to me, I was like, oh, I gotta do this more. Okay. Do you use human hair? Or is it, because that'll be real, <laughs> that would be so ironic if you're trying to represent natural no, hair, it's human yeah, hair. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's human, sometimes it's synthetic, sometimes it's mixed. Okay, yeah. but it's okay. Even if it is synthetic, it's okay. Because it's about it's about the message, you yeah, know what I'm saying, yeah. the messaging. So, to go back to mm -hmm. your mural yeah. and the messaging behind that, I wasn't even getting that. Even down to the flower, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying, everything has a meaning mm -hmm. and that's kind of really what what the purpose of me starting this whole podcast was because it's like you can look at a picture and be like all right cool that's nice yeah and then you move on yeah but now that you've broken it all down to me i'm like oh yeah. like you know what i'm saying so um i can just i just really appreciate that that part Thank of art you. like all the the thought and everything that goes into it to really tell a story. Yeah. Even when you said read the picture. Yeah. Never heard anybody yeah. say read the picture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you you can I try to be and I think it's important also to be like intentional with what you do, especially when it comes to art. Yeah. Um because of course art is subjective, so everybody can have their own type of interpretation. Yeah. But as long as you know what you want to do and yep. the reason behind it, you doing it so that way when people question you about it you'll have an answer for them one right. and they'll better understand the reason why you did what you did gotcha. because you could have easily just be like oh i thought you just adding decorations for the flowers right but for me to take it a step further and me being the intentional person that i am and say no this is what the why i put the flower and what it represents yeah. i think that's important as an artist for sure. overall mm -hmm. what is what is your your goal what's your long-term goal for your art oh that's a good question um a long-term goal. I honestly don't have a long-term goal. I just want to be able to tell my story yeah. and I want the younger generation and older generation to hear my story and yeah. be able to like teach other people as well because I just think it's I know the topic of hair is like so simplistic but I just feel like it's very important of the different types of uh, discrimination that yeah. our people face yeah. it could down to the hair that grows out of their head for sure. so I just feel like I want to just be able to tell my story the reason why I do what I do and I just want to tell it like all over yeah. I guess that would be my long-term goal is just going to different states and just constantly either making murals yeah. or doing paintings doing shows and just keeping that going yeah, yeah. honestly that's really what well, it is I think that's good because like you said um the, the idea of hair is simple, like on the surface level. Right. But when it comes to us, it's, it can actually be yeah. pretty complex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's it's, very true because yeah. I feel like us as black people, when we wake up in the morning, we're not just walking straight out. Right. You gotta brush your beard. Yep. You gotta touch up your eyebrows. Yeah. You gotta get, like, you know, we, we're intentional, whereas our other counterparts, I'm pretty, I feel like they're probably not doing as much work no. when they're quick, getting up quick in the day. It's quick. Shake it or whatever. And then I didn't, I didn't, no, seriously. So, um, 
and that's part of the story that I want to tell and showcase in other places, other countries, yeah. other continents, wherever it takes me. Um, if this leads to like a gallery opening or if it leads me to um, bigger opportunity, that's awesome. Yeah. But really my long-term goal is just continue telling my story. Gotcha. Yeah. So what is your, your business model behind your artwork? Or are you still not necessarily trying to make money with your art right now? So yes, what's my model? Yeah, like are you, are, do you have something in place like where you're like building on? So I have my website okay. that I sell my paintings on, right. www.selftossstyles.com. All right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also have merchandise on there where okay. I replicate my paintings onto like t-shirts, mugs, hats, not hats, but t-shirts, mugs, uh, notebooks, things like that. Okay. So I have that and then I do art shows. So like I have an upcoming art show in New York that I'm doing. Okay. I might be doing one in East Haven. So I try to do, keep that going because eventually I want to be basically living off of my art and art alone. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. So how are you booking these art shows? Are you doing that yourself or? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's all, cause you know, being like an entrepreneur, you are the CEO, you're the manager, you are the accountant, you are everything. Yeah. So I am looking on Google pretty much, um, scrolling through social media, seeing what's coming up, what events. I'm subscribing to the right websites where I'll get notified if something's happening, or if yeah. there's a, a call for art opportunity, and I'm just applying and sending my portfolio, paying the fee if need be, yeah. and doing that, yeah. Doing that, mm -hmm. cool, cool. Um, gotta ask you. Okay. What's your favorite color? Orange. Orange? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I, I've had other interviews and that's not a quick answer. So oh. why is orange your favorite color? Oh, that's a great question. So I feel like, so, so growing up, remember Keenan and Kel? Yep. Okay. Oh, wow. Orange soda? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you love orange soda too? So, younger. When I was, <laughs> I, I was a little lad, a little lad, okay? <laughs> um, yes, so I was a fan of Kel. Yep. I thought he was fine.com. Um, I loved orange soda because he loved orange soda. Yeah. And I, because of that, I was like, oh, I love orange. But aside from that, it became my favorite color because I just felt like orange could be a very bright color it could be a very muted color it could be a darker color and it wasn't like gender based i feel like oh pink is for girls yeah, yeah. blue is for boys but orange you really didn't have that it's like a happy medium type of thing gotcha. so that was also another reason why i liked orange and then it just became a thing that i loved because i love sunsets i love sunrises yeah. all that has orange so it just like it just became a thing that i love Dang, yeah so that's crazy <laughs> i was gonna say like orange always looks dope in the sky yes um, and it always looks good on black skin Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so remember that. <laughs> so do you do any kind of graphic designs? Like do you use any tablets or anything like that? So I just started literally last night. Oh yeah. <laughs> getting into some digital design a little bit. Okay. Um I kind of, I stayed away from it for a long time because I prefer my hands on the canvas and yep. being able to touch the paint and things like that. Yep. But I noticed that a lot of opportunities like whether you're applying for grants or other murals they want digital sketches or digital portfolios and things okay. like that and i'm just like my stuff is not digital unless i take a picture and upload it that way yeah but i feel like for my sketches my sketches are definitely not digital it's in my sketchbook yeah, yeah. and that and i remember back in the day that used to be enough yeah. apparently it's not enough anymore no so i decided to bite the bullet yeah. download an app but i only have it on my phone because i haven't upgraded to like an ipad or anything yet because yeah. i just started yeah so what what app did you download it's called I think it's called sketchbook sketchbook yeah okay. on Google Play I think it's on sketch and I bought a pen from Amazon yeah and I just started messing around a little bit and last night I really started getting into it because I kind of want to practice the habit of getting better with it yeah so when those opportunities do present itself I'm not scrambling around trying to make up something like for example last night they wanted me to um, upload a digital sketch for this particular mural in um, West Hartford I believe okay I didn't do it <laughs> yeah because <laughs> yeah. it's just like one fear because I'm just like I don't know what I'm doing with this thing because it's like so because it's touchscreen everything's so sensitive yeah and I kept messing up my hands are rubbing against the thing and erasing what oh, I already drew on it gotcha. and it's just yeah. like I'm not doing this forget it so yeah. I ended up not doing it it's just but, something new yeah it's but something you know new. as you as you continue to mess with it right you know you're an artist you're gonna you're gonna find your way with yeah. it and ultimately it's a tool yeah that, and I'm pretty sure like once I upgrade I didn't mean to cut you off no, you're good. I'm pretty sure once I upgrade to like a bigger screen too yeah. that'll help me like not draw over what I already or erase over yeah. what I already drew yeah, yeah. yeah for sure I've definitely noticed a lot of artists use tablets yeah when they want to you know do a yeah. digital sketch or whatever yeah so um are you, you are you familiar with NFTs 
I am not familiar. I know the name, yep. I know the concept, yep. but I haven't done the research to actually understand. Okay, so basically it's, it's digital art. And it, it can be more than just digital art, okay. but we're, we're talking about art right now. Right. So let's say, let's say you make a picture and you sell it to me. You can get paid, but you're gonna have a smart contract. But okay. now, say I turn around and I sell it to this guy over here. Yeah. I'm gonna get paid, but you're still gonna get paid okay. a residual as well. Because okay. it's on a smart contract. Right. So no matter where it goes, how uh -huh. far it goes, the price will continue to go up, but you're always gonna be getting paid on it. So am I selling you the actual image itself? So like I email you the image? Yeah, then... well it'll go it'll go into a crypto wallet. So yeah, but it's yeah. Okay. So definitely definitely look into it yeah. as you're um, you know looking into using your right. phone and stuff yeah. like that because they're right in the same vein. Oh. And that in itself may motivate you to like one to really really get on point yeah. with the digital art, right. but then to also to research the NFT space more because there's people out there making millions. Like, yeah. You breaking it down like that actually simplifies it. And I understand when you say, oh, I sell you an image. And then when you sell it, I still get money for it. I'm like, yeah. okay, that makes sense. As opposed to one of your paintings right now. Right. Once you sell it, yeah, you get that money. Yeah, that's that's it. Right. Yeah. So how about cryptocurrency? I know nothing about that. No, stuff. you don't know I said I am a, When I say I'm a dinosaur, yeah. I mean cash and credit and that is it. Cool. Everything that's outside cool. of that, I have no idea. So yeah, no, I don't. I definitely don't want to go left with the interview. No, it's okay. But I'm asking that yeah. because all of the nft artwork is yeah. purchased with cryptocurrency oh. so it's like well i appreciate you sharing this information yeah because i don't know what i don't know so, right right yeah and that's, so that's cool this is not going left this is just further educating me so i appreciate it yeah yeah because you already said that you're a very intentional person yeah so how do you come up with what you're going to paint oh that's a good question so <sighs> social media <laughs> <laughs> so i honestly um, so you know how social media with the alg algorithm, once you like two or three page, um, pictures, yep. it automatically shows you things that are kind of related to that picture. Yep. So I honestly just go, whenever I'm not automatically inspired a bit based off of my day-to-day -day life, yep. which is most of the time, I go on social media and I go to the explore page. Okay. And I honestly just scroll through and see what speaks to me. And honestly, like every painting that I've done is based off an image off of social media. Oh. Surprisingly, because I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, because my mother or because my mentor and it's just like, no, social media. Yeah, no, that's what's up, because, you know, I feel like there's a lot of artists out there, there is. Who, who are going to feel like it has to all come yep. from their brain. Right. And it's no. And that's kind of what also helps me continue doing art, because I also try to think like people have asked me, how do I stay motivated yep. in doing just stay, sticking with the topic of um, hair? But I think it's because I constantly see it all the time on social media as well. Yeah. So like I'll see people posing in different hairstyles, especially like I follow different um, hair salons. Yep. So when they're doing like hair shows in Atlanta yeah. or Miami and I see these extravagant hairstyles yeah. where they use wire to wrap it around, I'm just like, I got to paint that. Yep. So yep. I'm just like, I feel like that's what usually drives me to continue doing because there's so much you can do with not just hair, but black hair. Yeah. And you can just add so many different elements to it. And some of those elements are not even hair they'll use like flowers and stuff like that. So I'll use flowers to, yeah. to imitate black hair because yeah, you know, yeah. black hair is beautiful. You see a woman with the Afro puff and then you see a woman with the Afro puff with made out of flowers. Yeah. It's two different type of stories that you're right. seeing. And you, and, and you still know it's an Afro and puff. And you still know you it's an Afro puff. can't deny that I'm glad anyway. you said that. So last year I had my first solo art show. Yeah. And one of my friends came through and he was looking at my art. And I was like, I have a, a, some of the paintings that I had the woman was in, she was in gray. <laughs> so she was in gray, like black and white. So she had yep. no skin tone. Yep. So I asked him, I was like, do you think that's like a white woman or a Hispanic woman or a black woman? He was like, obviously it's a black woman. I was like, what makes you think that? He was like, her hair. Even though you don't see anything, you see her hair, you see her full lips, you see her big eyes, you see her right. cheekbones. Like even though, like you said, even though you don't see the actual Afro puff, yep. you know it's Afro puff based off of the flowers. Right. It's the same thing. When you're putting stuff on your merchandise, mm -hmm. like your different uh, paintings, paintings, we'll call yeah. it that. Yeah, you're putting your paintings on on merchandise. Mm -hmm. Are you doing that yourself? Yes. Like you're at home pressing it up. <laughs> no, not that. Part. Oh. No, not that part. So I upload it to a, so certain websites and certain um, 
warehouses have the ability where you can upload an image and they'll put it onto an, uh, a product okay. and then they'll print it out there and ship it. Yeah. So I do, I do kind of that, like a drop shipping. So okay. I'll like upload my image and then I'll edit it in a way that I want it to look like on the bag. So like, I don't know if you saw my beach bag that I had with the Is that the one that I was just looking at? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was tight. So thank I'm you. I'm gonna put that up on the screen so y'all can see it. Do that. <laughs> it's still available and it's still summertime. So you can get All a beach right. bag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of time by ordering it, having it, given it, having it shipped to me first before yeah. it's sent out, but I can't help it. I need to see what every product looks like before it's sent to my customer. Because one, I want to be able to add like a personal note to say thank you. Yep. And two, I want to see to make sure that it's the correct image. And if it's not, I send it back. Yep. I let them know, I fix it up again. And then I let the customer know like, hey, your order has been delayed, but however, it's on its way. Please receive like 20% discount um, for inconvenience like that. Gotcha. So yeah. So this is the lesson you guys need to take from that. Your brand is important. Important. Customer service is important. Yep. Now, like she said, it's taking a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. She's adding a step, but she's able to put a personal note in there yep. and guarantee the quality that her brand is yep. putting out into the world. So take notes on that. Before we wrap it up, I want you to shout out your page, your website, where they can get your, your products and everything. Okay, so my website is www.selftaughtstyles.com. S E L F T A U G H T S T Y L E S dot com. I'm gonna put that on the screen. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Uh, my pages, my Facebook is D Douglas. My Instagram is self dot taught dot styles. That's it. Talk about the upcoming show. I do have an upcoming show. One upcoming show happening in New York in Long Island City at Brooklyn Studios. You can get tickets now. It's called the Spectacular Black Girl Art Show. It's happening in New York, October 9th from, I believe, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. So please come out, support all the black women who paint, including myself. Yeah, and uh, where, where can they get the tickets? On their website. So if they go to a spectacularblackgirlartshow.com, okay. it'll be there. You yep. guys will see Dee Douglas again in the future. Absolutely. Um, I'll be covering something that she does. I don't know what it'll be yet, but it'll be something. He'll I'll be in be New there. York. He'll be in New York. Cover. New York. There we go. <laughs> coming to New York. All right, y'all. So that's it. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.